absolute pandemonium in Edmonton here in Rogers Place. Dennis Bernstein, David Pinota, the Edmonton Oilers have forced Game 7, beating the Florida Panthers 5-1 in Game 6. Our coverage here of the Stanley Cup Final presented to you, as always, by CCM Hockey. Dennis? Yep. Holy cow. Bedlam. We are about half hour after the end of this game. This place is still packed. We're inside Rogers' place. The <laughs> Ford Hall is right over there. People are going nuts. And I can only imagine yeah. what it is outside at the Ice District all around town. This place is nuts. The Edmonton Oilers forcing a Game 7, a well-deserved performance again today by the Oilers. Dave, if I told you eight days ago, they'd be chanting, we want the cup and meet it in Edmonton, you would have said I was crazy. But that's what makes this game so great. Like, we're going to on the verge of a Game 7. And if you're the Florida Panthers, Dave, I'm sorry. Again, not good enough, close to being good enough. After the first period, they had two shots on goal, both by Oliver ekman Larson. OEL cannot continue to be the best Panther on the ice. Just a stunning reversal of fate for both teams as we head to sunrise on Monday night. The Edmonton Oilers continued their dominance here in this one. And we thought, as we mentioned in the pregame report, we thought that maybe Florida was going to carry a little bit of momentum after their performance towards the end of Game 5, where they started to come alive, they started to claw back. But tonight, yeah. it just wasn't there. It was all Edmonton all the time throughout a full 60 minutes. The Florida Panthers didn't have an answer for them. I hate that we use the word, Dave, but the Panthers are choking. Three yeah. times to win the Stanley Cup, can't get it done, and didn't play well in any of those games. You could say the second half of Game 5, but tonight, a non-effort. 8-1 to one in Game 4, a non-effort, and I understand that part. But now with everything on the line, to think they're going to reverse form, I've really got my doubts, Dave. You know, forget about the two empty netters that beefed yeah. up the score a little bit. 3-1. Shots were 21 apiece. But it was still all Edmonton in this one. And Stuart Skinner continuing to be great for the Edmonton Oilers. Sergei Bobrovsky wasn't bad, but he was just good. He yeah, wasn't was great he for enough. the Panthers. Yeah, and the scary thing also, if you're a Panthers fan, 20 of the last 25 goals scored by the Oilers. Outscored 20-5 to five since the, uh, f uh, the third period of, of game three. Three, exactly. So, again... I don't know how they do it, Dave. They've got one more shot at at home. There's home ice advantage. But at this point, is there any advantage for the Panthers? I don't think so. They need to – I don't know really what they need to do. They need to go back to what worked for them in the first few games of this series. But we've been saying that. We said it last game. We said it for eight as days, well, the last, the last couple of days. Exactly. Last couple of games. They've needed to do that. We're going to head back to Sunrise for Game 7. We will finally be on the ice, as we've been waiting to do here as uh, the Stanley Cup will get hoisted by one of these two teams. Do the Panthers, can they shift the momentum or is this, is, is everything in Edmonton's favor at this point? Here's the scary part about the Oilers did tonight. Connor and Leon had one point. I think they both played less than 18 minutes. They're going to be a rested duo going to Sunrise in the biggest game of both their careers. Game 7 from Amaranth Bank Arena on Monday at 8 o'clock Eastern. Dennis Bernstein, David Pinota, we will see you in South Florida in just a couple of days.